Hello everybody and welcome back to another tutorial by Left to Live from within Road to Eden. In today's episode I will just show you a video of how to make and how a mid-tire to end tire base will look like and how to get there. So right now we're inside my base on my first floor and as you can see I have still tons of normal boxes, I have small pantry, fireplace cooker, flimsy barbecue, meat station, food station and these lovely small wall cabinets that can hold 50 items of any kind as well as some electric lightning well lights here and there forensic switchboard and this is pretty handy because if you press F on it sorry E you can see everything within its radius and you can flip it on and off so how do you get from a base made out of sticks and tin sheets to a base made out of stone with tons of storage. Well, it is actually more... It is actually simpler than what you might expect. The only things you actually need to get here is to find the book that lets you make stone components, well, stone walls. The windmill book, or you just go to one of the points of interest where you can actually find a windmill, like the farm that is right down here somewhere I can actually see it from my base but right now it's uh, raining and well foggy so I can't really see it but it's in that direction so there apparently <laughs> but what you want to do oh also you're going to need electricity 101 and solar panel uh, books to make the solar panels so to get here, basically you just need a windmill, and in the windmill you want to make mortar. And mortar you create by adding 6 stone, 2 clay, and a bucket of water, and you will get 12 mortar. Then you want to take your mortar, and some stone, to either a stonework station, that will let you craft it while not crafting it yourself. You can just put the components in here and uh, tell it where it's supposed to craft. Or a, a masonry station. Apparently I have not discovered the masonry station, but it works just like the crafting table. You just walk up to it and stand near it and you can craft the stone, the stone walls. As you see here, you need a masonry station, you need 14 stone and 5 clay, uh, sorry, 5 mortar, and then you can just craft it. If you have a stonework station, you just, you need electricity, you turn it on, and then you just click on what you want to make, and the quantity, and then craft, and then you can just walk away. If you have a masonry station, you have to stand next to it while you craft. So it is actually very simple to get a stone base up and running quite early. The only problem might be to get the iron plates needed for the windmill. And there is, well, two ways of getting those. Three, actually. Scrap computer parts. Make a furnace. Or go to this train station that is over here. And use the furnace there. But if you use it at the point of interest, then it's going to be guarded by, uh, well... I don't really know what to describe it as. Spider mixed with locust. And then you can just place your foundations. You put up your walls. And it's pretty simple to go from twig to twig and tin to stone. Especially if you use the yellow lined stones that I showed you before. That gives you like 60-ish stones once you mine it all. And then at my backyard I have... Another furnace, a brick oven, standing on two foundations to make sure they don't decay and lay flat, well, stand flat. My nice little garden where I can farm my uh, vegetables for better recipes. I've guarded my base with metal spikes and wood spikes. I don't have more layers than one of metal spikes because they cost a fortune in iron. And I don't like going to the iron mine because it's, it's a pain to clear it all, mine all the iron, and then get back. So once you've set up your stone, you're pretty much set. 
you can use a normal door. Uh, I just have these armored ones because they look cool and I like the sound. And as an extra layer of defense, you can just put down a stone block in front of the foundation. So if you have infected mutants coming to you, if they don't die by the spikes, they will not damage your base straight away. They will get stuck beating on uh, the blocks. And they are easier to replace than if they manage to break down a wall. And it's always easier to replace a block than an entire wall, because a block takes less space than a wall. What else do you need in an advanced base? Well, well solar panels is a given, or a generator, as you saw. You can use these normal wall lights, or you can use these forensic lights. I prefer these, because they give you more light. And the reason you need electricity is because all of the, well not all of them, but most of the benches needs electricity to run. To work properly. And except for that, you also need some uh, power banks, as I call them, the battery stations. I do recommend in the beginning that you start with the flimsy one that I have placed over here. The small one. Because that one just requires some car batteries and it works wonders in the beginning when you just have like one or two crafting tables or one or two lamps. Later on you want to advance to the bigger ones and in the end you will end up with these humongous. Sorry, that was not the humongous one. Oh, it was. I have two. <laughs> and they're uh, more tricky to make. And to make those you need one of these, the electronic station. And here you can also see that you can make portable solar stations of three sizes, small, medium and large. Same with the battery stations, small, medium, large. Some more uh, benches I don't actually have. It's also here you make more armor that I can't make yet. And here we have the solar panel. It only comes in two sizes, the small solar generator and the medium solar generator. I have two of these and one of the, the small ones. I had two, but then to a glitch I lost one of them. So I only have two medium, one small and one flimsy generator. <laughs> and that is way more than I need to power up my base. And I have uh, plenty of power stored as well, and you won't have that as well. Because when night comes, your solar panels won't generate any power. They will just give you nothing. So... In the night time I can turn on all my lights and thanks to all my power stations, well battery stations, I have plenty of power. Thanks to my backyard garden I have plenty of vegetables so I can craft fun foods. For example my kebab, the steak burger, pasta bolognese, strawberry cake are all made in the food station. And as well the food station needs power. You add your ingredients to the inventory, and then you can craft a bunch of items. I just prefer to make kebab and meat stew. The kebab you make at the flimsy barbecue, as well as the T-bone steak. And at the fireplace cooker you can make the beef stew. The reason I like to make beef stew and kebab is because for the ingredients needed, it gives you a lot of food. And if you have a rib, or you have a raw steak, you can put it in the meat station, and the meat station does not require power, so just put it in here and tell it to make the meat clubs into raw steaks, make the raw steaks into meat cubes, or make the rib into T-bone steak. And when I was new I had no idea how to use the T-bone steak, until I made this put, uh, meat table. Then I finally fi figured out how to use them. So as you can see I have plenty of food. Ah, here was my beef stew. I still only use the uh, <laughs> my grilled steaks and my T-bone steaks for the moment, so I run out of that. Because I also have a bunch of canned meat, chocolate bars, pineapple slices, hot dogs, well, sausages. And the most important thing you need if you play online in any base, depending on how long you will stay there or actually scratch that, you will need these in any base you make to make sure no one steals your items, is one of these. 
the crest. And to make a crest, you need one set of stone tools. So you need the stone hatchet and the stone pickaxe. You will also need two rubber strings, two metal rings, and a silicone tube. And the most grindy part of getting a crest is to get 125 wooden planks. Now, if you have a friend who's playing on the server, you can use his saw table, like this one. Or you can craft a saw bench. And the saw bench, once again, is like the crafting table. And the mason station. You just stand right next to it and you can craft planks. Or you can go to a point of interest. I know that there is one up here somewhere. A saw bench and one down here. But the one down here I know is protected by two spitters and about three normal mutants. But if you have a shotgun that's not really a problem. And once you have made your crest out of those components, you can press E on it and you can see the deterioration of your crest. Building status, locked, crest tire. Crest tire right now is only one, you can't upgrade that for the moment. Your block count, which means how much items you have placed in your base. And unlock building permission. You want to unlock building permissions so you can actually build within your claim. And to see your claim, you just look look at it, press F. And then, let's check outside. And then you will see a green box. And that green box is your property. No one inside or outside can take any of your building blocks. For example, they can't take your uh, stone blocks, your staircase, your wall. But, and this is important, for some reason, though they can't take your walls and anything like that, they can take your crafting benches and solar panels and lights. So everything in here, anyone can grab with a crowbar if they get in here and on the roof as well and that's against game rules as well as server rules you're not allowed to do that you're only allowed to do it if the base is clearly abandoned which means no crest uh, no one's been there for ages and so on preferably no sleeping bag or bed at all then it might be okay but always make sure then that the owner of the base is actually not there, he's not playing anymore Another feature of an advanced base, when it comes to resources, is this thing, the underground water pump. It can hold 10,000 liters of water, which is enough to fill 25 water buckets. And if I still had dupe collectors to fill 25 water buckets, I would have needed 51. 51 dew collectors to fill 25 buckets of water. So just imagine when I had to water my field with two water buckets each. 2, 4, 6, 24. So I would have had to use 48 dew collectors with a content of 48 dew collectors. Instead of just using the underground water pump. And the fun thing with the underground water pump is that it continuously gives you water if it's turned on, so if you have it turned off you can still use it to empty, well it's not empty, to fill your uh, containers and when you have it turned on it also pumps more water into into the tank so it is really easy to go from tin to stone, all you need is the masonry table learn the recipes by finding the book my best place to find books is done by the apartments because well it's about eight buildings and eight buildings with about two to three maybe even four bookcases each in some of them so it's a really awesome place to get recipes or you just loot buildings in the noob area and find it there what else can I say you need for an advanced base it's actually not that much more Make it out of stone, and you're good to go. So in short, masonry station, a pickaxe, a windmill, 
Maybe a furnace. But to get a furnace you need bricks and to get bricks you need a furnace. Or lucky looting. Electricity 101. So you can make... Uh, make the basic stuff like lights, the flimsy generator, flimsy batteries. But you don't really need that in the beginning. Just focus on getting your foundations placed, put up your stone walls. I'm still using a wood roof because I was too much of a cheapskate to make it stone. But since it's inside, no one comes here and make damage to it. I can just keep it to wood and keep it uh, cheap. Right now I'm actually going to try to upgrade my stone into concrete, so we'll see how that goes. But yeah, masonry station. Book for stone walls and stone blocks. Windmill to make the mortar. A pickaxe to get the clay and stone. Furnace to get the iron plates needed to make the windmill. And then you just find everything else you need. The, the benches, the blueprints for the benches. You can find all the materials for the benches in zone 1 except for the medical and bio bench. I did try a run to the hospital to get materials for the bio bench but I did not get anything at all except ammo and... Uh, yeah, it was a bit of a disappointment. But another thing you're going to need even at this stage of the game is nails and screws, mostly nails. Especially if you want to make these small cabinets, they require a lot of nails and wood glue. And then you make them at the woodwork station. So that is actually this tutorial on how to make and how a mid-tire and end-tire base might look like. If you have any questions, feel free to post them down in the comment section and I will reply to them. Until next time, stay safe, stay prepared and stay alive out there my friends. Ain't nobody getting time for that. Ain't nobody getting time. Ain't nobody getting time. Ain't nobody getting time for that.